Thank you so much, Sydney. Uh, welcome, everyone. We are so excited to welcome the Executive Vice President and Chief Executive Officer of AACP, the American Call Association of Colleges of Pharmacy, Lee Vermeulen. Prior to serving as AACP's seventh uh, Executive Vice President and CEO, Vermeulen held a variety of executive positions at UK Healthcare, the University of Kentucky Health System, and at UW Health, the health system of the University of Wisconsin Medicine. He has held academic appointments as Professor of Medicine and Pharmacy at the University of Kentucky, as well as Clinical Professor of Pharmacy at UW Medicine. He is an active health services researcher with over 80 peer-reviewed public Applications with an emphasis on interventions that improve the efficient delivery of high quality healthcare, as well as forecasting emerging trends in healthcare cost and value. We are so excited to hear your views and your expertise in this seminar. Uh, and we had a record breaking of uh, number of attendees to our CPPI seminar. So thank you. Um, and I will turn it over to you without further ado. Thank you so much. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks to all of you. Can you uh, see my slides? Are they up for everyone now? Okay, good, good. Well, it's always a pleasure to uh, to speak with a member institution, a member organization, and uh, VCU is certainly a, an amazing uh, place to uh, to learn and teach and uh, do research. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to talk with all of you today about this topic, the future of the Pharmacy Academy and uh, how pharmacy practice transformation will decide our future. We are at a particularly difficult time right now, as all of you are aware, uh, a lot of challenges in our profession. And uh, AACP has been doing a great deal of work over the last several years, uh, and certainly in the last uh, 18 months since I become uh, have become CEO, uh, we have focused our attention on uh, doing everything we can to address the challenges that our profession uh, are, are facing and, and, and to do it through enhancement in the Pharmacy Academy. So it's a great opportunity for me to share these ideas with you. I guarantee there'll be time towards the end though to have questions or commentary or comment uh, and discussion around uh, this issue. Um, so let me just give you, I, I was told I had to, had to put a uh, this slide in which kind of covers the, um, some of the CE requirements and credit, uh, as well as this, this uh, slide for our friend, uh, Dr. Engel at ACPE. But here's what I'd like to cover uh, for with you today. I'm gonna do a little bit of a brief overview of AACP, the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. Just for those of you who aren't quite aware of, or aren't as, haven't been involved in AACP in the past, many of you have been uh, deeply involved, but I wanna make sure we've got a level playing field uh, in, in that regard. Uh, I want to talk a bit about the challenges. I want to start with the challenges we're facing and then move from there to the things we're doing to address uh, those challenges. And again, we'll have time for commentary and discussion uh, at, the, uh, at the end. So just briefly, AACP, we were founded in 1900. So we're coming up on our uh, quasi sesquicentennial at 125 years. Uh, we are a professional association at the national level representing all 142 accredited colleges of pharmacy in the United States. 7,000 faculty members, 53,000 plus professional students, and 5,000 students in graduate programs. So this is the group that we represent and that we serve uh, in in Washington as a uh, the national as a national association. Our mission is to advance pharmacy education, research, scholarship, uh, practice, and service in partnership with our members and stakeholders to improve health for all. And that last part of our mission is so essential to us. Uh, and is something that I think uh, in many cases, uh, professional associations tend to lose sight of, that we're here to serve our patients and we're here to do uh, whatever we can through the advancement of uh, pharmacy education, research, scholarship and practice to, uh, to make sure that patients are being cared for in as best the way as possible. Our vision is that of a world of healthy people through the transformation of health professions education. And it's interesting that when I, when I became CEO and I learned more about what we do here at AACP. Uh, and I read this vision and thought, you know, this is really a, a critically important statement that it isn't just through the transformation of pharmacy education, but it really is an interprofessional responsibility that we have to advance uh, the health of, of patients 
in in partnership and in collaboration with other with other professions. So that is something we'll come back to a little bit as we continue down this uh, through my presentation. So we have a, a six part strategic plan. Uh, we're at the last year, we're in the last year of our strategic plan. So in fact, right now we're in the process of not only finishing the last of our, uh, the, the last uh, months of this strategic plan, but also developing our next strategic plan. And we have six different priority areas currently. Uh, the first and critically important as I'll come, keep coming back to throughout this presentation is to lead transformation in pharmacy practice. Uh, and again, I'm gonna say a lot more about our role in, tra in the transformation of practice uh, uh, over the next several minutes. Um, our second strategic priority is to optimize pharmacy education and training through the lifespan of pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists. Our third strategic priority is around diversity and equity, inclusion, and racism. Our focus and attention on diversifying our workforce, diversifying our student body, diversifying our faculty, but also in addressing uh, health disparities uh, is a significant part of our current strategic plan, and I'm 100% sure it will be a pillar in our upcoming strategic plan as well. Our fourth priority is around well-being and resilience for all, for our patients, but particularly for our clinicians, our, our practitioners in pharmacy, our faculty, and our students. And that strategic priority is another area that we have ongoing work to do that will last past the end of this um, strategic planning period and, and well into the next. We've got two additional strategic priorities that deal with the, the strength of AACP as an association so we can best serve our members and, and dealing with our operations at the, at the level of, of, of our association in, um, in Washington. So those are the six current pillars of our strategic plan. And as I mentioned, you know, we're, going, we're coming little into the time where we'll be developing our new strategic plan and there'll be opportunities for all of our members, including all of you to weigh in on the next set of priorities that we should, uh, that we should be focusing on. And this kind of conversation is really critical to me to better understand the needs of our members, of our, of our students, our faculty, uh, and our leaders in the Pharmacy Academy. I just wanted to throw in the slide set and you'll get a copy of these, uh, this, our organizational chart. I'm not gonna spend any time going through it other than to mention that we've, we've got a staff of, of, of 42. We're based in Arlington, Virginia. So we're not too far from you. We're always uh, welcome, uh, always interested in, in, um, in, in hosting uh, our members at headquarters. Uh, but you'll have at least the names of individuals who are responsible for the operations of, of, of AACP uh, in, in Arlington. So let me just move from that into a quick summary of the challenges as I see them that we're facing today in pharmacy education and more broadly within our profession uh, overall. And, and really the first one is, is the thing that wakes me up in the morning and the last thing I think of before going to sleep at night is the, the challenge and the concern that we have around enrollment in our colleges of pharmacy. Uh, I'll show some data in a few minutes about the enrollment uh, crisis that we have. And when I say crisis, that's really not hyperbole. We are approaching a time when we will not have the workforce we need to serve our patients. And right now, our focus is on identifying ways of transforming practice, taking on more responsibilities, doing more that we know pharmacists can do to change the health of our patients and we're making some promises right now that I'm very concerned we're not going to be able to meet because we simply won't have the number of pharmacists that we need to meet those obligations. So for, for me right now, declining enrollment is a critical. And, and when people just say, well, what, what do you, what's your biggest issue right now within, within the Pharmacy Academy, within ACP? This absolutely is at the top of the list. There are a number of things that feed into that that I'll mention in a little bit that tie into enrollment uh, declines uh, that I think we have to address in order to achieve success in bringing enrollment back up to where we need it to be. But a couple of other issues, curricular bloat is a concern. We, we've gone from a four to a five, now to a six year curriculum. There's still just simply too much to teach, too much to learn uh, within that curriculum as it stands today. And as we continue to find and identify critically important areas that we believe pharmacists uh, as they graduate from uh, from, from pharmacy school need to have as a skill set. Uh, we need to find opportunities to reduce 
uh, reduce in areas that don't uh, don't aren't bringing as much value uh, to our to our graduates, and that's going to be a continuing challenge as we see our new uh, our new uh, standards from ACPE coming in, in the in the coming months. The next several are kind of interconnected and again relate right back to that declining enrollment uh, concern. We have a we have in pharmacy a professional identity challenge. Our professional identity has historically been tied to a business model, to a product, to dispensing medications, not to our current kind of contemporary identification or, or understanding of, of, of value. And when we think of our professional identity tied to a product, it's not to say that that's the problem. We do, in fact, we must remain focused on our responsibility to make sure that, that patients are receiving the right medications, the right time, and the right way. That is our fundamental responsibility, but there's so much more we can do. And our identity needs to shift from being tied to that business model of dispensing product to our understanding of what we can offer to patients uh, clinically in every setting where you see a pharmacist practicing. We have today utterly unacceptable workplace, workplace conditions, particularly in what we're calling corporate community pharmacy. And I know all of you have seen and participated in the dialogue uh, within uh, the lay press, with social media around our challenges in that corporate community pharmacy setting. And we do have a critically uh, important uh, task ahead of us to make changes in that direction. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. One of the challenges though, in addressing these workplace conditions is that we're tied to that financial model that is tying us to dispensing product and not dispensing healthcare and not, uh, not advancing healthcare and contributing to the health of our patients. We need to shift our financial models in order to change the practice model that we have. So these are interconnected challenges that are unfortunately leading to an environment right now, which is making an awful lot of pharmacists question uh, their choice of their profession and, and sending messages back to people who are considering a, a, a career in the health professions uh, and considering pharmacy as, uh, as, their, as their professional calling, uh, calling into question whether or not that is a good, a good choice. And we have to change that narrative. We have to change it very soon. All these things have to happen in order for us, for us to address our concerns around declining enrollment. But those, as far as I'm concerned, are the critical, most critical and essential things that are, face, that are facing pharmacy as our challenge is going forward. Now, let me, let me dig in a little deeper on that enrollment problem, because I said we've got kind of an existential threat right now to our workforce. These are some data from that, that we keep compiled from our members, from our FarmCast, our application system. And what you can see here is the, the, the target number of seats available and the maximum. So these are the targets that our members have said. These are the number of students we'd like to have seated in each incoming class over the last uh, uh, five or six years. The maximum number is what ACPE tells us we are allowed to serve in terms of the numbers of our, our maximum capacity for, for training. And that last column, the scary one, is the number of seats we fill. And you can see uh, you know, a huge decline. Our entering class in 2022 that will graduate in 2025, we seated uh, just a little over 9,000 students. We need about 13,000 to 13,500 uh, pharmacists entering practice every year, just simply to replace those pharmacists that are retiring and leaving and leaving practice. And when I say we have an emerging crisis in our workforce, this, these are the numbers that we have to face. So it's not a question of whether we're going to have a crisis in our workforce. The only question is how deep will the crisis be and how long will it last? We are not going to have enough pharmacists to meet the needs of our patients within the next several years. And this is the, the, the challenge that we need to face moving, uh, moving forward. Now, that sounds as though it's uh, a fairly gloomy picture, but I wanna shift that narrative a little bit. And I think it's important that we all shift that narrative to more of an optimistic one. This slide just simply kind of points out where our graduates are going. You can see those last two lines, those bottom two lines, about half of our graduates do go into community practice. 
but a large portion of those are going into independent practice are what we call chain community pharmacy. We're shifting that, that verbiage to, you know, corporate community pharmacy is, is still a relatively, uh, it's a big group of our, of our, of our students, but it's not a, it's, it's not an overwhelming number, but it is where we have our challenges. What we saw and what you've heard uh, reported and what will be published soon, the report from our pharmacy workforce center, looking at the data from 2022, looking at engagement, looking at, uh, at uh, at sat job satisfaction of pharmacists across settings, you see that some of the most uh, committed, the most engaged, most satisfied pharmacists in practice today are those independent community pharmacists. And on the other end of the spectrum, those with the absolute worst uh, sense of engagement, worst sense of satisfaction are pharmacists that are doing very similar jobs, but in that corporate community pharmacy setting. And we have to be focused on that as our target moving forward. How are those pharmacists in Walgreens and CVS and Walmart and Kroger, how are, how are they uh, practicing and what can we do to assist? But a huge portion of our graduates go into hospital and we have, and we will continue to have one of the most versatile degrees in pharmacy that you can see in all of the other areas that pharmacists go when they graduate from our schools of pharmacy. And we ask questions in our surveys as, as pharmacists are graduating and they're moving into practice. We ask questions about how, whether they would choose pharmacy again as a career if they were starting college now. And you can see significant portion of our graduates are optimistic about their future in pharmacy. And when you look at the same kinds of questions from our alumni, we ask if you are starting your education over, would you choose pharmacy? Again, a substantial portion of pharmacists are, are satisfied with their choice. We have opportunities. We have opportunities for, uh, for improving uh, practice and improving the satisfaction and the engagement of our pharmacists. But I don't think it's necessarily a, an, uh, an utterly pessimistic outlook on, on the future of our, of our profession. So what can we do? Uh, to move forward. And the first thing that I'm going to, I'd like to just kind of comment on is the notion of leveraging the strengths of the Pharmacy Academy. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the, our role in practice transformation and the perception that other pharmacists, other pharmacy associations, other pharmacy groups have about our responsibility, about our role, about our belonging in this area of practice transformation. And I think we have a significant presence and, and require, have a, we were required to have a significant presence in that space. And these are some of the reasons why I think it's important that we keep that in mind and why I'm so committed, why I know all of our members are committed and are, are, uh, are prepared to have, a, uh, to have an impact on changing the trajectory of our profession. First of all, we've got to come back to this notion of the proven value competence, the confidence that our pharmacists have in changing the health of our patients. When we look back on the pandemic and we think about how we achieved the success that we were able to achieve, it, it is absolutely critical that we call out all of our pharmacists, pharmacy faculty, student pharmacists that contributed to giving seven out of 10 vaccines, COVID vaccines to, to our patients in the United States. And we are, we're a humble profession. That is something we just got to, we just got to realize and embrace, but we've got to stop being quite as humble as we are. We got to keep bragging on ourselves for the contributions that we make, the value that we bring to our patients uh, every single day. We are the most accessible healthcare professional and we have to leverage that understanding of our access as a part of that value equation and moving this forward. We are partnering with, and this is another area where I think we have incredible opportunity moving forward. One of the most, I think, influential ways that we can change the trajectory of our profession is to recognize that when you combine at the state level, at the local level, the influence of our colleges of pharmacy, our deans, our faculty, and in particular, our students, with our partners in state boards, and our partners in state associations, that trifecta of, of, uh, of individuals at the state level, at every state, in every state, can have an incredible amount of influence in changing the way we're, uh, we're uh, regulating pharmacy, the way we're practicing pharmacy. And I think this is another area where, uh, where I would say our colleges of pharmacy have an opportunity to take a leadership role 
in in convening those three in, uh, three groups. I'm, 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 I remain pessimistic, quite honestly, about the ability for us to do much of anything at the federal level to change the trajectory of anything in healthcare, but specifically within pharmacy as well. But I have just the opposite feeling about our ability to influence and change the trajectory of, of pharmacy uh, at the state level. And I think we've got great examples of that. And I'll mention a couple as we go through the rest of my comments. I also think we have an awful lot to bring uh, from the Pharmacy Academy in terms of bringing an evidence-based approach, resolving practice issues, to, to bring us a, a scholarly approach to identifying and, and maximizing new practice models and practice advancement, I think is gonna be a critical thing. And it's something we very often kind of also like the pandemic response, we kind of drive by that reality and that, that, that value that we have to bring as a pharmacy academy in, in bringing a scientific strategy, bringing research and scholarship uh, to the, the, the question of how do we fix uh, pharmacy practice today and how do we make it a more robust way, place to practice in, in healthcare. So I wanna move from there into a conversation about one of the areas that we're focusing on within AACP and our members are focusing on uh, to, to address these challenges. And several years ago, and I'll talk about a timeline in a moment, uh, we, we launched the AACP Transformation Center. It's a, long, it's a short word, short name for our Center to Accelerate Pharmacy Practice Transformation and Academic Innovation, which is a much longer title. Uh, we call it ATC, the AACP Transformation Center for short. Uh, an area within AACP, a group, uh, a, 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 an entity within AACP uh, made up of our members and staff who are working towards the transformation of pharmacy practice, thinking through many of the comments that I had made earlier about the importance of moving this forward. A little bit of background on, on the Transformation Center, uh, going all the way back to 2016 and into uh, the, the years prior to the pandemic, thinking about this notion of pharmacy, uh, the Pharmacy Academy as a vehicle for accelerating uh, pharmacy practice transformation. And, and as I mentioned, uh, you know, many, many pharmacists, many professional associations, pharmacy associations question what, why is this the, the Pharmacy Academy's responsibility? Shouldn't that really be a practitioner's uh, association responsibility, like an APHA responsibility or an ASHB responsibility? And we feel very strongly as an association, I think we feel very strongly as an academy that the pharmacy, uh, that pharmacy coll colleges, pharmacy schools of pharmacy have a critically important role in transforming practice and bringing practice transformation through academic innovation. So the center was created and launched in 2000 to uh, move, that, uh, move that agenda forward. Uh, we have been in place now for several years. We're working through a wide range of focusing uh, activities, trying to make sure that what we're doing within uh, the Pharmacy Academy through practice transformation is addressing the needs, uh, the needs of the profession through the, the, the real strengths of, of, uh, of college and schools of pharmacy. We established in 2022, uh, when we step back to June of 2022, we, we hosted the Bridging Pharmacy Education and Practice Summit, which was a, 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 an effort led by several different pharmacy organizations, as well as AACP to address a wide range of issues that will be facing us in the future. Things like, like continuous professional development, things like competency-based education, and this role of pharmacy, uh, the Pharmacy Academy in driving practice transformation forward. We've established an expert advisory council, which is helping to guide our association and our members uh, towards the, in the right direction for this, uh, this center to have uh, a meaningful and lasting impact. We're led by two incredible pharmacists uh, that I'll, I'll mention in a, in a few minutes uh, who are creating a catalog of ideas of ways that we can do tangible work within the academy to move practice forward. And we have recently had our board of directors uh, endorse uh, a new charter for the Transformation Center for the ATC, focused on ways we can uh, produce tangible results in a wide range of things. So these are some of the fundamental beliefs that we have, concepts, philosophies, things that we hold as truths within the Pharmacy Academy uh, both within, uh, within our board and our full membership uh, as to why we have this center. And again, this gets back to this question that I continue to hear 
from other pharmacists, from other associations of why, asking the question, why is AACP interested and what role do you think we play in practice transformation? First of all, we have to start with some, a couple of real critical understandings and things that we think are, are transformative. One is that it's, it's essential that we must transform practice for the survival of the pharmacy profession. And that seems a little, uh, a little, a little uh, uh, strong it's a, a phrase, but I think it really is, it is really true that there is a very real possibility that pharmacy, as we know, it won't exist if we don't find ways of transforming practice. We believe as a group of colleges and schools of pharmacy that we have a role in transformation. We believe we must take a leadership role in transformation by convening, by facilitating, collaborating with other segments of our profession. When other sectors within our profession look to the pharmacy academy, as opposed to when they look to other areas within practice, when hospital pharmacists look to community, when community pharmacists look at hospital, when other pharmacists in other sectors look at one another, they think, well, we each have a different objective. We have a different motive. We have a different agenda. The beauty of having this work done within colleges and schools of pharmacy is that we don't have necessarily a, uh, we don't have a turf. We don't have any of that kind of political uh, 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 challenge to deal with when we're focusing on uh, on transformation of, of, of practice. We can be a great convener, neutral ground, where all participants in, pharma, in the pharmacy profession can come together and focus on ways of transforming, uh, transforming practice. And that really leads to that next statement, that we can't do it alone, that we have to partner with other associations, other organizations, other components of our profession, and we're doing that through the Transformation Center. We are a place within AACP, within the academy, where everyone's voice can be heard without worry about turf, without worry about that political environment that is so prevalent in many other aspects, many other areas of our profession. And we are threading transformation efforts back in through scholarship and teaching and service. And we feel that's really a critical part of why our uh, Transformation Center exists and what we're doing within it. So what's essential for us moving forward with it, with, within the center? Uh, a wide range of things. And this is a broad agenda for us, leveraging our existing assets to foster new collaborations. We've got new structures that are being developed within our membership, uh, new committees and task forces to focus our members, our institutional or individual members on the work of practice transformation. We have in evolving and e e emerging external partnerships, some that we've had in place for many years, some that we're working to create right now. Our focus, especially in the short term, will be on addressing challenges in community practice. It's where our biggest challenge lies in terms of the, in terms of the, the, the nature of practice and workplace conditions, but also where just a huge portion of our graduates are practicing today. So we feel that it's very important that our short-term goals focus in community practice. And I'll talk a bit about some of the collaborative opportunities that we're pursuing in that area uh, moving forward. We're also looking at more broadly at our, our overall workforce and pipeline concerns. As, as challenges exist in community practice, we look to other sectors, we look to those numbers that I showed you about the number of our graduates going into hospital practice. And hospital practice is, uh, is also a challenging area right now and an area where we have opportunities to see practice transformation occur. It, it won't be good enough for us simply to address in the long term challenges that exist within community practice. We have to identify ways of, of, uh, of advancing practice in all sectors. And we're doing that through a wide range of activities and our expert advisory council has representatives from all different areas of practice uh, and different sectors of practice to, to drive that, uh, that, that, uh, that work forward. The, one of the challenges that we're facing today, and it's not just within AACP, but across the board within associations, uh, is, a is a challenge we have with funding these efforts to transform practice. And some of that goes back to the funding model and the financing model that I mentioned earlier in terms of having uh, pharmacy practice be funded through, uh, through the sale of product and not through the, pro the, the work we do and the efforts that we put into improving patients' health that are independent of, uh, of, of, of dispensing medications. 
We need to be working with our, with our members and with other partners to identify revenue streams to both study and develop and implement and spread new practice uh, standards and new practice models uh, throughout, throughout pharmacy. Again, our focus in the next several years, we believe will have to be in the community practice area, but we'll be looking for those opportunities in multiple other areas as well. And for us within AACP, for us to support our members, for us to support, uh, uh, to support each of our colleges and schools of pharmacy, we're also going to need to identify those operational resources needed to, to, uh, to make that, that, uh, that agenda move forward. So just briefly, kind of our, our current goals of the Transformation Center. Right now, we're in the process of, of kind of rebranding the Transformation Center, thinking about our governance, our affinity groups, how we're keeping members and being member-centric in the, in the work we're doing. We're focusing right now, and I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, Academia Community Transformation Pharmacy Collaborative, which is going to be housed within ACP, uh, which is um, a group of members, many uh, uh, from, uh, from over 100 of our schools of pharmacy uh, within the membership of the ACP are part of this, uh, this ACT Pharmacy Collaborative. Talk more about that in a, in a few minutes moving forward. That's going to be our short, those are our short-term goals. That's where we see the most opportunity for short-term gains that will address, and I keep coming back to this issue of enrollment. The number one thing we have to do in order to change the trajectory of enrollment is to make fundamental change in the way people view their practice in the community setting. One of the most visible areas of, of, uh, of pharmacy practice to individuals who are considering a career in the, health, in the health fields and considering a career in pharmacy. That's why we feel that is such a critically important area to work on. We need to continue to sustain the pharmacy collaborative in the intermediate range and to grow collaborations uh, particularly with community-based employers, Walgreens, CVS, and others, and to com continue to expand our, our community-based uh, practice transformation work uh, throughout all of our different areas within AACP. Our affinity groups, our sections and SIGs are critically important to making sure that that work continues long-term. And in the long-term, our goal is going to be to find other areas where we can find opportunities for practice advancement. And I think those areas are going to be in some of the most innovative areas today, in specialty pharmacy, in, in hospital pharmacy practice, in uh, what we're thinking of as, as um, ambulatory pharmacy practice. These are all areas that are moving forward in, 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 with a good trajectory, but we have to bring community practice to that next level so that they're, uh, that they're an equal partner in, in moving practice transformation forward. I want to say a few words more about the uh, uh, Academia Pharmacy or Academia Community Transformation or ACT Pharmacy Collaboratives. This is a group uh, that was formed several years ago in collaboration with the University of Pittsburgh, with the Community Pharmacy Foundation, the CPESN, uh, which is a, a network of independent community pharmacies around the country, and AACP to focus our attention on community pharmacy practice. And this is an area we have some collaborative partners, as I mentioned here, NCPA, ACCP, APHA. When we start to think about the notion of community practice, and this is something where I we, we've been saying now for, for a while, and many have joined in this kind of narrative within the academy, that we need to change the narrative within our pharmacy schools and colleges of pharmacy to be thinking about community practice in a different way that today we hear repeatedly, we hear from our own faculty members, we hear from, uh, from uh, members of our, of our membership, uh, participants in our membership saying, look, to our students, saying to our students, we really think it's important that if you wanna have a clinical role, you have to go into something like a hospital practice. You have to go into an area where you're seeing clinical practice happen. And to the point of saying, uh, quite blunt bluntly, if you if you want a, a, if you want a, uh, a a clinical practice, don't go into the community setting, which is an absolutely untrue statement and really one that has created part of this narrative saying to our students that this is somehow not as uh, not as good a practice environment, not as good a career. We have to shift that narrative. This group, the ACT Collaborative, and now with our uh, participants uh, and uh, current participants in it. Are, are shifting that narrative to say, we have an incredibly robust practice model within the community setting. And we need to find ways of expanding that 
to unite our pharmacists that are working in that area, along with the faculty members, we're calling ACT champions, that are everyone, are over 100 of our members right now, have identified faculty members who identify as having a, having a practice role, have a research role in that community practice setting. And it is a critically important part of what we have to do if we expect to move forward with shifting our enrollment concerns and shifting practice transformation forward. This ACT Pharmacy Collaborative is working today to unite colleges of pharmacy with practice leaders nationwide, focusing on transformation in the community practice setting, mobilize those st stakeholders and amplify the message of the amazing things that community pharmacists are able are able to do. We have three uh, collaborative signature programs ongoing right now between the ACT Collaborative with support from AACP and our other partners. One is a badging process where we're developing the training opportunities to give those who are and who have advanced practice models in the community setting and particularly those who are in academia uh, an opportunity to be recognized for their uh, for their development of their practice model in that in that setting and in that space. A community pharmacy student scholars program, which is going to be absolutely essential to moving this narrative forward, to changing that narrative from pharmacy practice in the community is is isn't the the, the place to go for a good clinical practice, but in fact, to say it's a great place to practice clinically and to give our students that sense of their uh, ability to lead in that, uh, in that practice space. And then developing a community practice center of excellence and centers of excellence in multiple schools and colleges to advance their, that, that framework for recognition of the work they're doing uh, in, 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 in clinical practice, in teaching, and in scholarship moving forward. So these are a number of different things that we're working together with the ACT uh, Pharmacy Collaborative on. It's an amazingly robust group. And for those of you who are part of that group, might be our, uh, uh, an ACT champion uh, at VCU, very important role that you're going to play uh, in moving our uh, practice transformation agenda forward for pharmacy. Some additional things just to mention briefly, a couple of other areas that we're working on within AACP to support our members. Um, we're going to be focusing, again, as I mentioned, an awful lot of work around advocacy going forward. That uh, trifecta of our, our colleges of pharmacy, faculty, and particularly our students, in combination with our partners from state boards and our partners in state associations, we believe that partnership is essential to driving uh, the future of pharmacy through uh, advanced uh, uh, new and advanced regulatory structures, as well as uh, policy work. Um, you know, when we start to think about the the potency of of that kind of trifecta in partnership with NASPA, with APHA, and other associations to bring that forward, I can't tell you how. Uh, strong a partnership that that can be. And if you look at the things that have been happening in Idaho, in Vermont, in Ohio, and other states that have had great strides forward, it's been through that partnership where our colleges of pharmacy have worked very closely with their state boards and their state associations uh, to make that happen. Uh, a few other kind of key areas that we'll be moving forward on. Competency-based education is going to be an essential area for us to continue to work towards to both drive diversity within our workforce and within our student body, but also to make to, to recognize the fact that 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 are some 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 uh, candidates in pharmacy schools, some student pharmacists, they don't all learn at the same pace, and it's critically important that we build a curriculum uh, structure that would recognize great great future pharmacists who simply uh, can't necessarily go through a four-year curriculum at the, at the pace that we set out within our current standards. And that competency-based education is going to be an area we're going to move forward on. And as I mentioned, resolving our challenges around curricular bloat has to be something we move forward with. We're working at AACP to expand our membership base, to focus our attention on areas that I don't believe historically we've given nearly as much attention whether it's preceptors who are doing an awful lot of our pharmacy education for us within our schools of pharmacy or our pharmaceutical scientists, where we, quite frankly, I don't think we've made quite a well, as welcoming a home as an association, as, uh, uh, as, an, uh, uh, as a pharmacy academy, as we could and as we should and as we must. So that's going to be an area for us to focus on how do we better serve 
our preceptors, our experiential faculty, how do we better serve pharmaceutical scientists so they have uh, they feel uh, being uh, they feel welcomed uh, as members of AACP and working with us towards these these outcomes. Expansion of our research activities, both intramurally and supporting extramural work within our membership, is another area that we're working towards supporting each of our members uh, as a convener, as an advocate within areas where we know there is uh, shrinking but important areas of funding for research and really coming up with a better research agenda uh, to support the work we're doing as an academy. And then, of course, we have a global strategy, a global strategy think focusing on our role internationally, both in terms of bringing pharma, uh, pharmacy uh, uh, or students, uh, both graduate students and professional pharmacy students in the United States for training, but also uh, exercising our responsibility globally for providing uh, education within many different areas. Those are some of the other areas that we are focusing on in addition to practice transformation. Um, and I'll stop there with a couple of assessment questions. I need to put a couple of pieces out there. I don't have them put into Zoom uh, uh, or as a, as a poll, but just wanna ask the question. Some of these are fairly obvious, but wanna go through these before I open up the questions. But the uh, first question compared to 2022 in the year 26, the number of graduating pharmacists in the United States will increase, decrease, or remain the same. Give you a minute to think about that question. I think the data I provided a minute ago should be obvious. We will be decreasing in the number of graduating pharmacists by 2026, a big challenge that we're going to have to focus on. Second question, uh, colleges of pharmacy have a, <clears throat> a clear role in advancing pharmacy practice transformation, true or false? Hopefully the argument that I've made earlier will resonate with all of you that I believe that is true, that we do have a critically important role in advancing practice transformation. And then finally, which of the following constituent groups have the greatest potential to influence regulatory and policy setting at the state level? Boards of pharmacy, state associations, or colleges and schools of pharmacy. As I've mentioned, I believe all of the above working in partnership is really the direction we need to be moving in and the influence that we can have within regulatory and policy setting at the state level is something that I, I think we should all be focused on moving forward. So I'm gonna stop there and, and see, uh, get this, this other claiming credit slide, those of you who need it, and I know copies of these slides will be coming out to you if they haven't already. Um, so you'll have that number for claiming your CE credit. I'll stop there and see if, if uh, any of you have questions or comments or anything around a, a dialogue on, this, uh, on the, any of these topics. Thank you so much. If there's anybody in the classroom that has a question, feel free to use the mics or on Zoom, and we'll just give it a few moments um, to ask some questions. So Lee, uh, Casey here. So first and foremost, uh, thank you for offering your time as well as uh, your candid remarks on where we are uh, and visiting us here at VCU. So I wanted to say thank you for that. Um, two thoughts. One that comes to mind is first, your renewed emphasis and engagement, particularly with our pharmaceutical scientists and those students that are really going to contribute to the profession in a variety of ways, but perhaps not in a pharmacy. And so I want to say thank you there. Um, VCU is part of the PDRG group. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's ongoing conversation about how AACP can bolster what we do in the research and uh, thinking critically about the research we bring to bear that moves the profession forward. The second part of that is, you know, Dave Dixon's here in the room and, and you and I have had conversations about some of the research and outcomes work, particularly related to hypertension, the impact of pharmacists in those settings. What are other ways, particularly as you think about what's been impactful in the conversations you're having at the Hill um, that we should be thinking about as institutions, but also our students should keep in mind as we move forward with this shared approach? Yeah, thanks, Casey. You know, uh, the PDRG, and for those of you who don't know, it's the Pharmacy Dean's Research Group. It's made up of, of some of our top colleges of pharmacy, R1 institutions that are, are doing a, you know, the lion's share really uh, of, of our graduate education, our graduate training within, uh, within the membership of AACP. And you know, I, I do want to point out you know, the, the, the critical importance of, of focusing on, on research. And it's not just though at PDRG institutions, and it's, it's at every one of our institutions, research and scholarship is of utmost importance to uh, the, the success of our colleges of pharmacy. And, and we need to do a better job of making sure that our pharmaceutical scientists 
And I would I broaden that to, to scholars in, in many other areas in social administrative sciences. I'm not always sure that we provide as welcoming a home uh, for 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 scientists as we do for uh, for uh, for pharmacy practice faculty. And I think that really is something that has to change. Uh, and it will be a focus for AACP moving forward. Yeah, you know, there are so many different areas within pharmacy practice. And I, I mentioned the, the pandemic only and our, our response, you know, to uh, to the pandemic uh, vaccinating uh, America as just one example uh, of where we have the opportunity as, a, as, as pharmacists to influence care. But it, that's, just, that's just one that happens to get a lot of attention, but it's hardly uh, the most important necessarily. We've got patients who are being cared for with hypertension, with diabetes, chronic illness in general has to remain our focus. And when we're talking with other, uh, with other, uh, other professions, both in Washington and again, especially at the state level, those are the areas that I think we have to give the most attention to. When we think about our current conflict, if you will, current controversy between the American Medical Association, and I don't wanna put too fine a point on it, but it really comes down to this controversy between AMA uh, and essentially every other profession saying we don't, they, AMA does not support practice, uh, uh, practice role expansion. But the reality is there just aren't enough primary care doctors in the United States to serve the needs of our patients. So we have to recognize that reality and say we, all of our patients, every American deserves a primary care uh, 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 deserves primary care that is effective and that produces better health. Pharmacists as the most accessible healthcare professional in our country is in a perfect position to support that activity of driving. And I, I know it's a controversial thing to say, but as, as we start to talk about community practice, many of us have shifted the narrative around to primary care pharmacy. And I think that's an important thing to point out that what we're providing in many of our pharmacies, in many of our community pharmacies is indeed primary care pharmacy. And that's something that I think we can leverage at the national level. But as I've said, so much of the work that's going to get done uh, and so much of the advancement of our practice roles and our responsibilities, our, our, our ability to have uh, expanded scopes of practice will be at that state level. And I think that's an area we should be focusing on. Sincere, thanks, Lee. Thank you again. Thanks, Casey. So, Lee, I have a question.